Good morning, friends. It's Lori Landon, one of the pastors here at First UMC Kirksville. And I hope that this is a chance for you to just take a deep breath and pause whenever you're watching this, whether it's at 9.30 on Friday or whether it's sometime later on. How is it with your soul today? I know my answer to that question is a little complicated right now. I am happy and grateful that we had a wonderful 4th of July weekend. Um, I'm also really sad because my uncle passed away recently. And I'm worried about loved ones who are dealing with COVID-19. So it's a whole mix of emotions. Um, but I've learned it's important to name those, both the situations and the emotions that follow, to admit that you know, sometimes we can't do this alone, that we need the support of our family and friends, and that most of all, we need the power and guidance of the Spirit of God. And that power of the Spirit of God is the topic of chapter four in Richard Foster's Streams of Living Water that I've been reading through. And this week he deals with the charismatic stream. That is the Spirit-filled life. Uh, this is the life that we see at Pentecost. We've been talking a little bit about that over these past few weeks as the early church on that very first Pentecost witnessed the Holy Spirit pouring out on those gathered in Jerusalem. The disciples were given the ability to speak in different languages and those gathered could hear the good news that Jesus that the kingdom of God had come near in their own languages. And as the Spirit continued to work, this shaped Christianity because they quickly discovered that the Spirit was not bound by the social norms of the time they were in. It was not bound by the way religion had been, was not bound to any specific building. Instead, the wind blew where it would as the Holy Spirit. They found that women as well as men were filled, young as well as old, slaves as well as landowners, Jews and Gentiles. And this shaped the way Christianity developed, that the Spirit of God could fill everyday folks like you and I, and that people joined in with the work of God's kingdom and bringing it near on earth as it is in heaven. John Wesley found this in England in the 1700s when the Spirit nudged him to step out of the pulpit and take his preaching outdoors to the miners as they were going to and from work. Here in the U.S., in the early 1900s, a black man named William Seymour born in the time of extreme racial segregation, lynchings in the Ku Klux Klan, was drawn to this charismatic tradition of God's spirit active and present. And he sought to learn all he could, even when he was not allowed in the sanctuary where it was being taught because of the color of his skin. He would sit in the hallway outside with the door open and listen even though he couldn't go up to the altar afterwards. He moved to California and began a prayer group there. They joined in a ragtag bunch of folks, mostly from the lower classes at first, folks from all different races who were working as washerwomen, porters, um, cooks and cleaners. And they had in 1906, April 9th was the day that it began, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, much like the one at that first Pentecost in Jerusalem. One woman was given the ability to play the piano, another to sing in different languages. People prayed and there were miracles and healings. And this continued on and on. They were filled with the power of God. And before long, Many joined them, folks from all races, nationalities, economic classes. They were flocking to this charismatic gathering. And this was unheard of in that time for folks of all colors, of all creeds, of backgrounds to be gathered at that altar, praying together 
filled with God's love. And for Seymour, he looked at divine love as the standard. It didn't matter if you could speak in tongues. It didn't matter if you were doing miraculous healings as much as it mattered that you were showing the fruits of the Spirit. Were you showing love and joy, peace and patience, kindness and gentleness and self-control? Pentecost, he declared, that makes us love Jesus more and each other more. It brings us into one common family. Now, he had a vision of an all-inclusive community where it didn't matter who you were. If you were filled with the Spirit, you were welcome there. And this went against so many of the social norms of his time. There were other Christian preachers who would come to visit, and when they saw whites and blacks and browns and those of all colors of skin gathered together at the altar praying, they turned around and they left because they believed so strongly that God was in support of the social norms that split folks by color lines that they wouldn't stay. But Jesus talked a little bit about how we recognize when the Spirit is truly at work. And Jesus said that we recognize it by looking for the fruits of the Spirit. That same list I mentioned earlier, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, goodness, generosity. Those are the fruits of the Spirit. There's a list of those in Galatians. Maybe one of those words on that list stands out to you. And if it does, I would encourage you to begin praying that God would strengthen that quality in your life, would fill you with the Spirit, the power of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit, and that God would open your eyes to seeing all the thumbprints of the way, that that is happening in the world around you. Because the beautiful invitation of this charismatic stream is that we get to join God's work of breaking down barriers, bringing freedom, bringing a little piece of heaven here on earth. We get to join. And God provides us all we need to do that through the power of the Spirit. So as we close today, my prayer for you comes from Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in God so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So go in peace, friends, and be on the lookout. God is real. God is present around us. And whenever you see those fruits of the Spirit, Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, generosity, faithfulness, and self-control. Whenever you see those at work, wherever they're at, you can know that God is near. Go in peace, friends. I'll see you next week.